Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. And we're going to do another boat scene, I think. You'll like this one. And I, what I've done, I've left a thin film of water. If I look at another video, you'll, you'll see how I've done that. And right at the top, this is Phthalo Blue and Indigo. And we're just going to put this in at the top. I've also dried where the moon is, just to keep it from uh, creeping into there. We'll sort that out after. <clears throat> this is a mixture of Thalo Blue and Indigo and permanent rose making a lovely violet colour and I want to bring it around the moon I'm using a flat brush for this, it's, I find it easier you've got plenty of time, don't worry about it running down the page Bring it into the blue. At the bottom, this is a mixture of Naples yellow and cadmium orange, which of course will be opaque. Bring the two colours together. Along the horizon line. This is a stronger mix of the Thalo Blue and Indigo with Permanent Rose. I'm going to add this in. The top, I'm going to allow this to flow. And then back once again to your Indigo and Thalo Blue. We're going to really put some strength into the top. As the board is at a slight angle, this will run, which is exactly basically what I want it to do. Just pull all the colours together, just encourage the blue to flow through. Keep bringing it down. into the bottom part of the sky strengthen it up where you think you need it I'm starting to fiddle and then we're going to leave this to dry off a little bit and then we'll uh, strengthen up the top of the sky just run the, a damp brush around the edges this removes any excess water or paint that may have gone over the edge and it stops the paper from sucking it back onto the page okay we're going to leave that to dry off a bit okay the paper's still wet but what I've done I've added some more indigo and some burnt sienna to the original blue which was the phthalo blue and indigo and we're now going to bring in some darks and we're going to allow this to slowly drift I've changed to a round brush as I'm trying not to disturb the paint too much underneath you would do that with a flat brush if you did I want this to settle on the top and run down a little bit and then we will watch it for a while strengthening up the corners and the top this is where it will drift down from as you can see the strength of colour um, strength of colour is important 
a, a lot of people are frightened of using uh, watercolours and uh, the strength of colour it fades and they don't quite get the hang of it but all you've got to remember is that it does fade and that's it certain colours will fade more than others like your, your reds and your uh, alizarin crimsons uh, your cadmium reds basically will go down by 10% some will go down like your crimsons can be very very fugitive and so long as you learn that, you, you adjust your paint mixture there to combat it, to overcome it. And don't be in a, a rush. That's the other really big mistake that people make. And funnily enough, I still make that mistake. As you can see, I'm just keep adding it and adding it. And I kind of like that last bit in here I think might need a little bit of that later on wash your brush out make sure your brush is just damp so it only sucks paint and you're not adding water to the paper just stir this one up yet again this is a colour called freshwater blue and um, rolls, permanent rolls with some burnt umber and we're just going to add maybe a cloud along the bottom here always works better if you have paint on your brush clean damp brush just soften the edges off as you can see this is drying out and I'm not going to touch it anymore and we're going to leave that to dry okay <clears throat> we'll just come to the moon here and this is a mixture of fresh water blue and i'm just testing the strength here for me that's just a little bit on the strong side so i'm going to water that down like i said this is fresh water blue with burnt umber and permanent rolls what i'm just doing is i'm just putting some patches in the moon and we will be glazing back over this so we'll just keep this going just washing it down a little bit I don't want it too strong it's got to be reasonably pale and I think that's that's a better colour just paint your shapes in enable you to see that it's a globe or a circle now that we have that done <coughs> I'm just going to take some clean water now and re-wet the bottom. We'll come back to the moon later when it's had time to dry and sit on the paper for a while and then we'll glaze over it with a different colour. As you can see where I put the water I'm just leaving it short of the horizon line just a couple of millimetres. Taking the excess water off my brush and I'll pull the excess water from off the sides I keep saying I'm going to fix my squeaky chair but it's not uh, I haven't got round to it yet and into this I'll just weaken it slightly this is the permanent rose and indigo with phthalo blue just test the strength I uh, yeah it will fade we'll be adding other colors into this of course but right at this moment in time i just want to get the initial color on and once again with the uh, naples yellow and cadmium orange we can just paint that in go all the way across the boat don't bother about that bring the two colours together now with some indigo phthalo blue and just a tiny touch of burnt umber I just want to add some streaks in there will be a stronger mix of this going down for some ripples take the excess back off 
add some to the my tangerine colour. I'll leave all that to dry. Okay, now that the moon has dried a bit, uh, I'm using a very, very watery wash of Seaver's Blue, or you could use Cerulean Blue for this, and Permanent Rose with a touch of Phthalo Blue in it. And I'm just going to test it because it needs to be only just to stain, really. And you have to be quick with it. So as not to disturb the paint underneath and I want to leave a, a white crescent there so as like the sun is hitting it from below as the sun has set and that's it and then we're going to leave that to dry <clears throat> paper is still a bit damp and when it's when it's dry enough we what we will do is we'll, we'll, we'll do the bolt once your paper's dry and the moon is dry, what I'm going to do now is to <clears throat> just fill your bolt in. This is a mixture of the Prussian blue and, sorry, phthalo blue, indigo and the violet, the red violet that we made. These, just to keep it on the, on the red side. I just want you to paint the shape of your bolt in including the mast and when it comes to do the rigging you can either use a watercolour pencil or you can use a fibre tip fine pen to put the rigging in so I'll do this I'll fill this shape in and then we'll have a look at it once this has been painted there's no detail in this ship or boat should I say it's just a case of following the lines okay welcome back hopefully when you've uh, put your boat in uh, with all the rigging it looks something like that now we're just coming here to finish the the ocean off and I'm just going to put a couple of ripples this is the um, phthalo blue and indigo with a touch of permanent rose added to it so it still stays <clears throat> on the blue side and we're just going to put some waves in here maybe a ripple sort of dry brushwork taking it right off the page you're just looking for a little bit of movement in the water not looking for anything any specific shapes then with a damp brush and soften some edges off keep softening the edges off as you see them working quickly too much water on my brush there too much water on it will cause a run back and we don't we're not looking for that or for that kind of effect I'm just taking some speeding up a little bit while the paint is still a little bit movable forgive my arm just breaking some of the hard edge up then we have a we add a little bit more stronger mixture to it so it takes it well into the blue side indigo and phthalo blue with a touch of permanent rose and we're just going to darken up one or two of these areas and while we have this here as well what we're going to do is just put a little shadow in along the bolt line taking your damp brush once again scuffing all that off not really interested in a mast but you can put one in should you wish to but we might but it's not really uh, that important now we're going to leave all this to dry 
Okay, your painting's nearly finished now. The only thing I've done once it's dry is with a craft knife, I've just put a water line in under the boat, uh, or yacht as I think it is, and just a couple along the tops of the uh, ripples here. So now comes the best bit you get to sign it, mount it, and frame it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you want to try your hand at uh, painting something more traditional, I'll leave a link in the description box and you can have a look at the other videos that I have made. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, <coughs> please click the like button and please subscribe. Subscribing costs you nothing, it's absolutely free and it helps to keep little channels running um, thank you very much for watching